fight fans, here we go. Spar Star Promotions is proud to present the rerounds of mixed martial arts in the Bantam weight division. This bout is sponsored in part by MMACageCanvas.com. Once again, our referee in charge of this bout, George Gallegos. And now, introducing to you first, on my left, fighting out of the blue corner, he is wearing black trunks, trimmed in white and blue. He is training out of One Legacy Training Center, San Diego, California. He weighed in 131 pounds. Tonight, he is making his debut. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Gavin, the Gravedigger, Mitchell! His opponent across the cage on my right, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing red trunks, trimmed with white. He is training out of Team Body Shop in Hawaiian Gardens by way of Downey, California. He weighed 135 pounds. His record, two wins, one loss, with one win coming by way of stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Dominic Asadio. All right, fans, here we go. The rerounds of mixed martial arts in the Bantam weight division. All right, it is nice to see Dominic rejoining us here. He was recently at Spar Star 59. So we love it when our alums come back to fight for us and for those who go on to their professional career. It's also dope to see them in the crowd here tonight. Action begins now. Gavin catches the kick. Right away, holds on to it, and maybe the shin pad's giving a little extra grip. Here we got double unders for Dominic. Good trip. But Outside trip. Oh, good hips from Gavin. Gavin. Very nimble and finds his way back up very quickly. Yeah, nearly uh, was able to maintain the top position, but uh, Dominic wisely able to pop back to his feet. Now in the over-under, throwing knees, throwing mm. short punches. Trying to pummel to the inside. And they both do, so just exchanging the position. Now double unders for Gavin. See if he can, he's gonna put him up against the cage. Usually looking to drag him down. Mm. No, does he have a, he's got an overhook now. Yep, yep. so uh, over under. Nicely done from Gavin. Does end up on top. He's got one, now he's forced, he's looking for a body lock pass. Mm -hmm. Yep, so this is uh, interesting. This you don't see a ton of in MMA because uh, your face is available to be punched while your hands are locked. Um, but uh, it looked like the feet slipped out anyway, so would have been tough to go for a traditional body lock pass as Dominic could have closed the guard. And I'm intrigued here, John, because when you don't kind of put them in butterflies. And just moves right oh, over into the mount. Into mount. Why not? As one does, John. Uh, Passing guard, easy. Done. I, I, I didn't realize, but uh, I'll have to try that next time. Um, very nicely done from Gavin in a, a fantastic position. Unfortunately, only 10 seconds left to go, but this is... Uh, it's a good way to end that <laughs> round. Absolutely. Yes, to you know, say the least. One thing I wanted to point out here as we have a break in the action, if you're looking at where Dominic was, initially when you get taken down like that, you have an open guard. If you can, because it did look like his feet. I thought at one point he had kind of a butterfly hook. At the very least, it becomes a very, very um, useful weapon to keep distance from your opponent, to push them, hopefully to get yourself back up if you want a technical stand-up. Like, wherever it is you're looking to do, things are more available to you in that butterfly. And as a result of that, you saw Gavin see an opening, jump over it effortlessly, and then end that whole round and mount and it just makes you think like okay maybe it was one of those moments where he didn't quite see the takedown happening but as a result of it it does let you know that Gavin is going to take advantage of any small little mistake that you make when it comes to the jiu-jitsu and the wrestling transition so I'm intrigued to see if that is a correction that they're able to make and if we saw it earlier before these scrambles are going to be probably very 
very intense if these gentlemen choose to go that way. Yeah, usually at the lighter weight classes, it's already uh, going to be pretty scrambly just because yep. both guys are typically in good shape and uh, it's less less body to move around. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, with these two in particular, I think, yeah, we might see some really fun and energetic scrambles. And that's if we go there. We, we may be back to a oh. stand-up round, as I was getting to say. Oh, yeah. That one looks like it just barely caught him, but caught him pretty mm -hmm. solid. Mm -hmm. Definitely definitely made that face turn for just yeah. a split second here. And there you can see Gavin switching stances, mm -hmm. looking to drop down off of that. He actually got his head caught, yeah. but still was able to go underneath it. But here with this underhook, that should keep Dominic on top yeah. at the very least. Sucker drag attempt. Okay, oh. and that's going to put him in an anaconda. Sucker drag is the counter to the anaconda, though, so... Oh, and a nice Uchimata. Overhook Uchimata does not get Dominic to the ground, but does get him into a... Does he have a front head and arm? Yeah, he's got a yes. front head and arm standing. Loses the though. head. Yep. And this is what we were talking about just a few seconds earlier. It's like if these guys elect to go with their grappling sides, it, it, it gets scrambly, and you might see one of them have an advantage for just a few seconds where it can change in a heartbeat. And now, I think if you see the action break up at any given time, we get a little bit of a peek at their stand-up again. But I think both of them want to try and fight for that edge just Ooh. on the grappling side. And there could be a takedown here. Good pummel on the inside with a Excellent left balance. underhook from Dominic. That really saved his bacon. Yep. And that cage definitely was very friendly in that moment to make sure he wouldn't Trying get taken down. But outside oh. trip. Tries to elevate Gavin, but Gavin's got really good hips. And again, this is what I'm talking about here. If he took you down the first time, you have an open guard. You either want to commit to a closed guard or try to go. Yeah, I'll take that. That's a little bit better. But notice how that yeah. side's opening. And he's going to take that pathway. Another and body look pass. Wow. Hey, listen, okay. I, I, if it works, absolutely. Oh, trapping the arm. Topside crucifix. This used to be the big finisher in MMA uh, maybe about 15 years ago. <laughs> It's uh, you get there and just unanswered punches, and the ref will stop in and uh, come in and stop it. And but I want to point this out: it's that you know when Gavin has worked some of those takedowns, Dominic has not ended up in the worst position. It's the transition that happens of just leaving that little bit of space there that you really, have, if you can make your battle in that moment, maybe, maybe you're back up, or at the very least, you're back to a scramble where we've shown you and him can be neck and neck. So when, when you leave that little bit of opening, you're leaving that body lock opening. You're leaving that pass opening. So I just feel like either a commitment a little bit quicker to a closed guard or to that butterfly could be a very effective tool because I'll tell you this much. We saw them scramble much more in that second round. I wonder if it happens even more in the third. Yeah, I mean, I don't know who's teaching the uh, grappling down at one legacy training center or if Gavin's just came into the to that training center and uh, already had this level of grappling, but uh, they're doing a great job. And so um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you're bringing up such a great point, John, which is credit to Gavin's team for putting them in those scramble scenarios because it looks like he is very comfortable in that world, especially when that first shot, he got a little bit caught yep, with that leg. And he's just like, oh, yeah. we go back to work. And look, now back into this kind of, like knee exchange now they're going to be probably seeing who's going to be able to utilize this either against the cage or for a takedown there was a low oh. blow so it looks like we're going to have to take a yeah. moment here gavin is down and i oh, do man. believe the ref is going to give him some time to rest but that looks like a pretty significantly bad low blow here i believe that came as a result of one of the knees right john i, I believe so oh, I, I didn't man. get a great angle on it but um the way that he's reacting to it is not it's, good that's not encouraging no. yeah hopefully it's nothing that that, uh, I mean, like, the fight aside, right? Yeah, like, uh, hopefully course. it's nothing that ends up with any kind of, like, lasting pain or <laughs> anything like that. Uh, but, I mean, some of these low blows, if they're bad enough, that absolutely they will have to end the fight. So, um, I mean, oh, this is not this looking is, yeah. good. You never um, want to see your fighter writhing around on the ground like that after an um, inadvertent uh, foul. Oh my goodness. And nobody ever talks about this, but to have to recover in front of this many people on a telecast you you feel so much for gavin in this moment where you say this is a dude who looked like he was very very close to a decision win if 
nothing else. And at the very least was showing a great aspect of his art throughout this yeah. evening. He was now, looking really good. You know, you, you almost feel a sense of, do you get up? Do you, do you rush it? But if you rush it, is that putting you more in danger here? We're not even at the can you get up phase yet. This is a, he's processing how his body feels and it just doesn't look very, very promising that he is going to get back up and continue this fight. Yeah. So we, there's we, a huge concern here from the audience as oh, they are the, expressing the, themselves. The crowd is oh, booing, but, but he's um, putting the mouthpiece back in. I don't. And you should not boo this. This is uh, this is for the fight. I mean, this is amateur MMA, and even if this were the highest level professional, like uh, I've had training partners that, uh, or not training partners, but I've um, heard of stories of people in the gym that I was training at. I happened wasn't there at the time, okay. <laughs> uh, where there was a foul of this nature that was an accident as well, and ended up with hospitalization oh, and no. uh, the removal of uh, certain body parts. Oh. And well, it's not it that, is you know, okay. um, you know what? very serious you know, potentially. Gonna, so uh, to, to be booing this conversation this, here, hopefully uh, <laughs> he is okay. <laughs> we definitely hope he's okay. Yes. But I think you are trying to illustrate the issue that it is a very very real thing that it can yes. be a significant injury and we want to look out for our fighters here it's just now i think with everybody looking with the the very serious faces Oof, uh, i just i see gavin over on the side he's trying to jog it out I i've hope. seen heather on the side trying to tell him he doesn't have to do this that's good that's really good you because know, i was gonna say saying, i'm hoping that his corner is shouting across like take your time like no, don't listen to anyone you do not start anything until you know you're okay this is um just because of the danger of it. Like, it we're not, uh, we don't want to see anyone get, like, severely injured or uh, anything that's lasting, you know. severely heartbreaking because you know this decision is happening in real time. You know that there's a, a heart in this fighter that says, I don't want to disappoint my fans. I don't want to disappoint people who bought tickets or who are watching this live. And yet at the same point, you know, we as, I think, concerned individuals are thinking, we don't want anything bad to happen to you, guy. He looks like he is quite a bit more recovered, which is very promising. Oh, and they're going to oh, start it. Okay, right back thank you. The action, okay. You well, really don't know the severity until you've taken enough time to assess what's going on. And it looks like Gavin is moving pretty well. So, okay, that's a fairly ooh, long minute 38 or not, unless he can oh. continue with a nice mat return here. And now Gavin Jumps. looking with some more motivation to try and finish this up, if anything else. He's coming in with some strikes. He's got to calm that down, but he is getting a nice grip underneath the chin, John. Do you think that is something he might be able to finish here? I, it is absolutely something that he could finish. He's going, trying to finish it palm to palm. He's going to maybe turn it into a neck crank. Uh, gets, uh, he puts Dominic on his back, and now, it, depending on the squeeze and the angle that he has, this absolutely could be a fight finisher. All right, I think we're just trying to get a better angle here. The referee did look like he was there. You're seeing a little bit more to the side. There is a possibility this could finish. It does look I, I, very well under that chin. The referee is right on top of it. So that is why you are seeing him right there, John. What is that? 40 seconds left to go, too. So That's he's a got lot a lot of time. of time to work, and it looks like it is under the chin. So if he's got a good angle. This, oh, no. Yeah, Dominic, it. excellent escape. Getting his back to the mat. That unravels the choke. Now on top. And now the roles are reversing, but you're noticing at the very least those butterfly guards. Good ooh, punches. Definitely was helping him out here, but Gavin has to respond. He is taking a lot of shots at this moment, and the referee may be inclined to go ahead and break this one on up, but he gets to guard, which might help him a little bit. That arm might be in play, but if you do see Dominic go out of it, it would be just fine. And woo! You know, there's a lot that happened within those minute 30 seconds. Those 90 seconds right there, John. Think about this. You saw a fighter have to take their full five to recover. You saw our matchmaker saying, you don't have to do this. You saw everybody looking like, buddy, take your time. And then when they went right back to the action, that was not an easy fight for Gavin to continue fighting. And there could have been a stoppage there. There was very close, but you get the impression the referee might have been like, hey man, if I'm gonna stop this, I need to make sure it's a pretty definitive exclamation mark because consider that he came back into it. Yeah. So then you get the fight result, which is probably the best round out of Dominic. Yes. Throughout all three rounds. Yes. And now we're going to a decision where 
you think that Gavin had the edge, given those first two rounds? Uh, I'm not sure. And at the same point, if he didn't continue the fight, maybe he doesn't win that decision. So th there are too many factors at play here, but it did make for a very compelling finish to what was already a pretty good fight. John. It was an exciting fight all, all <laughs> around. Like the, the drama, the, you know, the there was like a risk of injury. There was, uh, are, are you, do you have enough heart to continue? Are you in the fight still? Um, and then there was, the, the technical aspect was excellent as well. Both fighters very good. And what I was going to say before the foul happened is that uh, I was uh, congratulating the team that Gavin's fighting out of because he was able to make um, these grappling moves work against somebody that is also a very good grappler. Yeah. Some of the things that Dominic was doing were pretty high level. He's not new on the ground or anything. So to, to make yeah. those things work against somebody like that, and as you can see, Gavin ended up on the bottom, tried to go for a pinch headlock, maybe looking for a shoulder crunch or whatever sweep. Um, and uh, Dominic recognized that instantly slipped out of there and started teeing off. So he is, he is very aware of what's going on with the grappling. So that makes the grappling of Gavin early on much Absolutely. more impressive, right? Um, so it was just a great fight all around. I'd love to see these guys fight again. Um, okay. But uh, probably, yeah. they probably would rather not. Um, but uh, it was a good fight and uh, curious to see how this one goes. Yeah, I, I would say this, though. If you're thinking about this, between the fight between Gavin Mitchell and Dominic Viscario, you look at this and you say to yourself, in that third round, you know, I had talked a little bit about the butterfly guard, and you know what? Screw that. We're going to find out the decision right now. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to our scorecards. We have our decision. <laughs> Judge Kate side, Jackie Denkin, scores about 29 to 28 while both judges, Kate Side, Eric Ede, and Carlos Shad scored about 30 to 27 in favor of our winner by unanimous decision, the blue corner, Gavin, the great bigger, Mitchell! Let's watch my friends. That's right, my fans. Once again, make some noise for Captain Mitchell! 